Marie Catherine Laveau was a Louisiana Creole practitioner of voodoo, herbalist and midwife who was renowned in New Orleans. For several decades this voodoo queen held New Orleans spellbound. She staged ceremonies in which participants became possessed by Lowe's, voodoo spirits. She dispensed charms and potions, even saving several condemned men from the gallows, told fortunes and healed the sick. The first white settlers of Louisiana were French, usually the second-born sons of aristocrats who left France to seek adventure in the New World. These Frenchmen came to be called Creole, and made up the upper crust of New Orleans. The word was later used to refer to white Frenchmen as well as people of color in New Orleans. The Creole living in Louisiana at that time intermixed with black slaves, free people of color, Indian and Acadian people. Many Creole today can trace their ancestors back to that time. Although there is plenty of information about Marie Laveau in the legends and lore of New Orleans, separating the fact from the myth has always been a challenge. Nearly everything that is known about her originates in the secretive oral tradition of the practitioners of voodoo which has been embellished with hearsay and drama, making an already larger-than-life persona absolutely formidable in the tales that survive. Marie Laveau is believed to have been born in the French Quarter of New Orleans on September 10, 1794, the illegitimate daughter of wealthy Creole plantation owner Charles Laveau and his mistress Marguerite, who was reportedly black and Choctaw Indian. Marie grew up on her father's plantation where she was educated and studied to be a hairdresser. She was a devout Catholic who went to Mass every day of her life. On August 4, 1819, Marie Laveau married carpenter Jacques Paris, a free person of color from Haiti, and went to live in the French Quarter of New Orleans. Their marriage certificate is preserved in St. Louis Cathedral in New Orleans. This record also contains the names of Marie's parents, Charles Laveau and Marguerite d'Arcantrel. Marie was described as tall, beautiful and statuesque, with curly black hair, golden skin those with African ancestry helped revive voodoo and other African-based cultural practices in the New Orleans community, and the Creole of color community increased markedly. Paris went missing and was presumed dead in 1824. Marie insisted that he had died and that she was a widow although there is evidence that he had deserted her. For whatever reason, Paris was out of her life and she was left with two children to raise. Following the custom of the time, Laveau began calling herself the widow Paris. After Paris' death, Marie Laveau began working as a hairdresser catering to the wealthy white and Creole women of New Orleans and this is considered the root of her enduring legend. About 1826 she entered into a common law marriage with Louis Christophe Dominil de Glapian, a member of a prominent local family. She lived with him until his death in 1855, but as late as 1850 a newspaper still referred to her as Marie Laveau. Although she and Glapian never married, Marie had 15 children by him in rapid succession and ultimately ended her hairdressing career to devote all of her energies to raising her brood. But she by no means lost a clientele, for as she settled into domesticity she also set about becoming the legendary voodoo queen of New Orleans. Although she never abandoned her Catholic roots and always urged people to attend Catholic Mass, she became increasingly interested in her mother's African traditional beliefs. While voodoo was commonly practiced in New Orleans, it had a sinister reputation, and was actually banned at different times in Louisiana history. The widow Paris learned her craft from a voodoo doctor known variously as Dr. John or John Bayou, and by 1830 she was one of several voodoo queens. Laveau combined voodoo beliefs and Catholic traditions, holy water, incense, statues of the saints and Christian prayers, which helped make voodoo and hoodoo, the magical rituals associated with voodoo, more acceptable to upper-class New Orleans society. Her beliefs included the recognition of spiritual forces, which can be kind or mischievous, that preside over daily life and intercede in the lives of their followers. Connection with these spirits can be achieved through dance, music, singing and the use of snakes. Marie Laveau quickly came to dominance as the voodoo queen of New Orleans, taking charge of the public voodoo rituals and ceremonies held at Congo Square, one of the few locations in rigidly segregated New Orleans where people of different races could mix freely. She ran other operations at the Mason Blanche, the White House, which was built for secret voodoo meetings and liaisons between white men and black women. Laveau made a good income by selling Gris Gris, an amulet originating in Africa which is believed to protect the wearer from evil or brings luck, charms, magical powders guaranteed to cure ailments, granting desires and confounding or destroying one's enemies. She also told fortunes, gave advice on love and prepared custom Gris Gris for anyone needing to effect a cure, charm or hex. Around 1875 Marie Laveau gave her last performance, and announced she was retiring to her home on peaceful St. Anne Street in the Old Quarter. But she never completely retired. She continued her work until at least 1875, when she is said to have been active visiting the poor and imprisoned, and still giving readings in her home. On June 15, 1881 Marie Laveau died peacefully at her St. Anne Street home at age 86. Thank you for watching be sure to subscribe.